Hi, this is Ali Arango of Little Guy CGI, and today I would like to show you how to make, as well as texture, clothes with some help from my wife Susan Arango, specifically made for the Manuel Bastoni add on in Blender 2.79. So let's get started. Okay, if this is your first time in Blender, I recommend you go to File, User Preferences, go to Input, and then choose Select with left click. Blender's default select is with right click, and this may confuse you if you're coming from Adobe programs or other 3D programs. Also, while you're in here, click on Add ons, put a check mark next to 3D View colon 3D Navigation, then scroll down. Put a check mark next to mesh colon auto auto mirror. Put a check mark next to mesh colon edit tools two, mesh colon F2, mesh colon inset polygon, mesh colon loop tools, mesh colon relax. Put a check mark next to object colon Skinify rig. This is a very important one for this tutorial. Also put a check mark next to Pi menu colon 3D viewport Pi menus. Also Pi menu colon UI Pi menu official. Okay, this tutorial uh, is about making quick clothes for the Manuel Bastoni add on. I have another video where I show you what that add on is. What he can do and i'll put a link up here so you can get to that the first thing we're going to do is we're going to make sure we have our cube selected we can tell it's selected because it's outlined in orange we're going to press x this brings up our delete menu we're then going to left click to delete that cube and uh, i'm going to click here on the manuel bastoni add-on i'm going to quickly set up some options again uh, in that tutorial that i put up uh, for you to get to it explain pretty much what i'm going through here uh, so with this standard options here, I just put check marks there to bring in rigging just because I figure why not? It's so easy to do it. I'm going to click initiate character. Okay, so here's our character. I'm going to make a small change to the character, which again, this add-on makes very easy. I'm going to hover here, hold shift, press B. I'm going to draw a zoom box to zoom into this character. And uh, this add-on basically makes things look beautiful and I'm going to show you real very quickly I'm going to turn on this denoising which is amazingly spectacularly great that's a whole nother story this is spectacular long story short this makes the images that typically come out from samples uh, from cycles if they're not that high samples they tend to be graining the denoiser fixes that it's amazing anyway I'm going to click here I am going to Okay, that's set up. And uh, I'm going to hold control. While holding control, I'm going to hold alt. And then while holding control and alt, I'm going to press zero. What that did was that made this box come up here. Here, This is our camera here. I'm going to press in. I am going to select lock camera to view. I'm going to hold shift and the middle mouse button to pan. And uh, the other tutorial will give you more information about this add-on. I did want to show you what this is like though. So I'm just going to click render image so you can see. There's our denoiser working. Look at that. Uh, it's so great. Okay, but there's our, our you know, that quick, we came into Blender, delete the cube, we have this character here, okay? It's it's spectacular. The issue is, is the clothes. Uh, and uh, I had made a tutorial on this not too long ago, and uh, one of the issues was, you know, how to make clothes for this thing. And I did a tutorial on making clothes, it's not too quick. Hopefully this one will be uh, much, much quicker than that. So what I'm gonna do is press escape now. Okay, what we're going to do now is take away this check mark next to lock camera view. I'm going to hold the mouse button to rotate. I'm going to look to the left. I'm going to select display. And then we're in user perspective. We want to be in front orthographic. 
So I'm going to select view perspective slash ortho. I'm then going to click front. And right here, you can see we're in front ortho mode. Ortho stands for orthographic. Orthographic is kind of a way of seeing 3D objects as almost as if they were like 2D. I'm going to zoom back. And we're going to use one of the many new cool features in Blender 2.79. You do need Blender 2.79 to do this tutorial. Uh, Blender is a free program, so hopefully you won't have too you know, uh, much issue with just going and downloading it if you don't have Blender 2.79. See where this 3D cursor is at? This is important because in Blender, where the 3D cursor is at is where objects tend to come into Blender at. So with our 3D cursor here, if your 3D cursor isn't here, you can hold and press Shift C and the 3D cursor should go to the center of your scene. Okay, so with that, what we're gonna do is we're gonna hold Shift, we're then gonna press A. We're then going, and this brings up our Add To menu. We're then gonna go to Armature. And then what we're gonna do is see these options right here. We're gonna go down to Basic and we're looking for a basic human meta rig. So then we're gonna left click here. So there's our basic human meta rig right there. Okay, some of you might see that rig there. Say, what is this, a rigging tutorial? Why are you bringing an armature in? It's like, no, it's not a rigging tutorial. It's, you'll see. Okay, so uh, what we're gonna do with this is we wanna make this rig be basically the size of our character. We also wanna make it so we can see the rig through our character. So with the rig selected, and it is because it has an orange outline around it, what we're gonna do is click on our puppeteer button. Looks like a little stick man there. We're gonna go down to X-ray. We're gonna uh, put a check mark next to X-ray. We have our 3D cursor here. And you can see our Manuel Bastoni add-on character is pretty much basically standing on that 3D cursor as well as our armature. So what we wanna do is go to here. Typically Blender's default uh, Pivot point is the medium point. That's what you see right here. We want to click here and then we want to select 3D cursor. The reason why we want to select 3D cursor is because we want to scale this armature, but we want to scale it from this 3D cursor so we can easily make this line up with our Manuel Bastoni add on. So, what we're going to do is with this selected, we're going to press S to scale this down. And you want to really pay attention to the arms. And then left click so you can see the arms from the front view at least look like they're you know pretty well inside of our character right there our Manuel Bastoni add-on character okay what we're gonna do now is let's go to our pivot point let's change this from the 3d cursor back to blenders default pivot point which is the medium point so I'm gonna left click there I'm then gonna left click on our armature I'm then gonna click here and then select pose mode. So here in pose mode, what we want to do is we want to basically line our legs up. I want to push this down some before this, as I'm looking at this now, so I'm going to press A. I'm going to click here and then I'm going to go to edit mode. I'm going to press Z. I'm going to go to wireframe. I'm going to press B and I'm grabbing right over this area here. I'm going to press Z, then come back to solid. Now, the reason why I went into wireframe, if I try to press B, which is box select, which is what we just did. If I did that without doing that in wireframe, the way our current settings are, I would have just grabbed the front parts of the uh, armature that you can see. Since I went into wireframe and I grabbed this, now I grab the front as well as, you know, what's in the back of what we can see. So with this all grabbed here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to press G and then Z. Push this down like that. Now I'm going to press A to deselect. Okay, so now with that done, I'm going to left click here. I'm then going to left click on pose mode. I'm going to click here. I'm going to press R to rotate on the Y axis like this.
Okay, so with that done, what I'm going to do now is I am going to, since we have this leg in the pose and this character is a bisymmetrical character, which basically means that this this side is the same as this side, what we're going to do is we're going to, with this bone selected, we're going to click here for copy the pose of this bone, and then we're going to click here to paste this onto this other bone. So long story short, it just makes this bone do what this bone is doing here. So now we're going to press uh, A to deselect. We're going to click here, go to edit mode. Okay, that's fine. I jump back. Don't let that get to you. I'm going to click uh, right view. And our character is back a little. So I'm going to press A to select all of our armature bones. And then I'm pushing this forward. So about there, so uh, that should be good. Looking at the neck. Okay, so I'm going to press uh, A to deselect. I'm going to click here to go back to front view. I'm going to click here and then click here to go to pose mode now. Okay, if this isn't a rigging tutorial, then why do I have you lining the rig up with our character? And this is why. Here in pose mode, we're going to click right here. We're going to scroll down. When we scroll down, we see this Skinify rig, which is very nice. Uh, and what this is, this is something new to Blender 2.79, and what this basically does is it allows us to put a mesh around our armature. Not only does it allow us to put a mesh around our armature, but the mesh has good topology. So what we're going to do is see where it says thickness. We're going to click here. We're going to uh, press 2 and then enter. And then what we're going to do is we're going to look to where we see solid shape as well as fill gaps. So I'm going to left click on fill gaps. I'm then going to left click on solid shape. And then with that done, what I'm going to do now is select add shape. Okay, let's press A to select everything first. Now let's press add shape. There we go. Okay, and now you can see now we have this mesh added uh, over our armature. However, because the armature is inside of our Manuel Bastoni add-on character, it's over our character as well. Okay, so now that we have that done, what we want to do is we want to click here, go to object mode. We're going to click on our armature. Okay, we're going to click on our mesh. We're going to click on this wrench. We're going to click apply as far as our armature shape. Now we're going to, with just the mesh clicked on, we're going to hold Alt. While holding Alt, we're going to press P and select clear parent. Okay, now what we want to do is we want to click on our mesh. We want to click on what looks like a wrench. We then want to go to, this is our armature modifier. We then want to click apply. We now want to click on our armature. We don't want this in pose mode. I'm going to press A to deselect. I'm going to click here. I'm going to go to object mode. We want our armature selected. We can tell it's selected because it's highlighted orange. And with it selected, we want to hold control. And then while holding control, we want to press A. And this brings up our apply menu. We want to select scale to apply the scale. The reason why we did that was if we didn't apply the scale T armature, once we deparent the uh, mesh from this armature, which we're about to do, uh, this armature would try to go back to its original scale that we first brought it into. So by applying this the scale, we don't have to deal with that. So now we're going to click on our mesh 
we're going to hold alt and then while holding alt we're going to press p this brings up our clear parent menu we're then going to select clear parent and just select it by left clicking on it okay what we want to do now is we want to click on our armature we want to press m to bring up our move to layer panel we then want to left click here to move that armature to this layer we're going to click on the mesh that is going to eventually be our close we want to uh, go into local mode so we can focus just on this so the way we do that is we make sure we have uh, we are clicked on our display tab here we look up here see where it says view global slash local we'll left click here and now we're in local mode which means we basically can just focus on this right here so now with that done we're going to click here we're going to go to edit mode we want to make things easier to work as we work and the way we can do that is we can click on our tools panel we can scroll down look to where we see auto mirror we can click this triangle and then we can select auto mirror what that auto mirror did was it put a mirror modifier on our mesh for us automatically and then it also put a check mark here next to uh, clipping which keeps one side of our mesh from pulling apart from the other side so i'm going to press a to deselect when you select things in blender the main ways the main way that you tend to select things is by using the vertex edge or face select of which you can select right here we're going to click on the uh edge select i'm going to hold alt while holding alt i'm going to left click right here when i held alt it tried to select this entire loop right here i'm going to hold the middle mouse button to make sure it didn't select the entire loop so i'm going to hold shift now and i'm going to left click and then while holding shift still, I'm going to left click here. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold them in a the mouse button and turn back towards the front, roll the mouse wheel to zoom back, and then I'm going to press V. And what the V did was it ripped one edge from another. So it just basically separated what's going to be our pants from what's going to be our shirt here. Okay, with that done, I'm going to press A to deselect. I'm going to go right to here. I'm going to hold alt and then while holding alt i'm going to left click here and i'm going to press v again you can see that just separated uh, that edge from the other edge so i'm going to right click to get that to go back into place then i'm going to press a to deselect i'm going to hold alt and then select here I'm going to hold them in a mouse button just to make sure it got the whole edge it being blender i'm going to press uh v and uh that's good I'm going to press A to deselect. I'm going to hold them in a mouse button to rotate. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold Alt, then click here. Hold the middle mouse button, just making sure that we got that whole edge. And we did. So now I'm going to press V. And there we go. Excellent. So I'm going to press A to deselect. Okay, what we want to do now is click here to go to face select. I'm going to hover here i'm going to press l and what l does is it selects a piece of geometry that isn't connected to another piece uh, of geometry is probably the easiest way to explain it so i'm going to press p to uh over open our separate menu i'm then going to choose selection i'm now going to hover here i'm going to press l i'm going to press p then choose selection i'm then going to hover here press l then press P, then choose selection. I'm going to hover here, press L, then press P, and then choose selection. Okay, with that done, what I am going to do is I'm going to scroll up here. I'm going to go to display. I'm going to select view global slash local. I am then going to click here, go to object mode. We're going to start. with our pants first so i'm going to press m to bring up our move to layer i'm going to click here to move our pants there i'm going to click on it's going to end up being our shirt i'm going to press m which brings up our move to layer i'm going to click here i'm going to click here press m move that to another layer i'm going to click here hold shift and then click here i'm going to press m and move those to that layer so now what i'm going to do is i'm going to hold shift and then i'm going to click here ok 
Okay. Okay. I want this here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click here. I'm going to press M and then I'm going to click here to move the shirt there. There we go. So we have our pants here. So with our pants here, we have our mirror modifier on and everything is sectioned up so we should be good. Okay, so what we are going to do is with our pants selected, we're going to click here. We're then going to, and this is our modifier panel, by the way. That's where we're at. We're in our modifier panel. We're then going to go down to shrink wrap. So we're going to click shrink wrap. Let's put a check mark here for keep above surface. And our shrink wrap modifier basically makes an object in Blender stick to the uh, another object. So what we want to do is have these pants basically form themselves using this modifier to our Manuel Bastoni add-on character here. So we're going to click here for this eyedropper. And this allows us to just visually go in and select what we want this modifier to be applied to. So I'm just going to left click there. And now here you can see uh, this modifier working. So with that done, let me click here. And this, when I click there, this just tends to make things look like they're applied. We have our basic shape there. What we can do is we can click here and click X-ray to see. And our pants are in their basic shape. Uh, what we, I'm going to put this X-ray on. I'm going to click here. And then here, what I'm going to do is I am going to click here. And I'm going to add in a modifier to give us some more geometry. That is the sub subdivision surface modifier. So I'm going to left click here. The subdivision surface modifier came in. I clicked here and it doesn't look like it's doing anything, right? What we can do is click right here. This will make this go above the shrink wrap modifier. The way the modifiers work, they kind of work in a stack system. So everything kind of runs down. So to have this subdivision surface modifier show its effects through the shrink wrap, this needs to be over top of our shrink wrap. So I'm going to click here. And now you can see uh, with this that this is above, I mean, uh, uh, above the shrink wrap modifier. And it's more closely matching our Manuel Bastoni uh, character here. Okay, what we're going to do now is we're going to apply these modifiers. So we could just click apply, apply, and apply. Or we can just select apply all from right here. So now all of those modifiers are applied. So what we're going to do is with this selected, we're going to click here. We're then going to click here to go to edit mode. I'm going to hold the middle mouse button to rotate the view. See how this kind of dips down here? What we're going to do is we're going to go to edge select. We're going to hold all while holding alt. We're going to click right on this edge here. And then what we're going to do is I'm holding this to uh, hold the middle mouse button to rotate back towards the front. I'm going to press S to scale on the Z axis, zero. And then I'm going to left click to lock that in. I'll hold the middle mouse button so you can see that that straightened this out. Uh, so with that done, I'm going to press E to extrude and then right click. So I made new geometry right there. It doesn't look like it did anything because I right clicked, but because I made that new geometry, now I can take the manipulator and pull up some like that. So now I'm going to press E to extrude and then right click again to make more geometry like that. What I'm going to do here is one of the nice things with Blender, see this, uh, it's very close to our legs. We still have this x-ray on here. I'm going to click here and you can see once we put that x-ray on, it's like, oh, it's not, you know, as uh, quote unquote, as you know, nice as we thought it was. So one of the things we can do to deal with this is we're going to come here and this may seem strange to you, but we're going to click here. We're going to click here. We're then going to click our shrink wrap modifier again. 
re-put this on then we're gonna put a check mark here and then take this to offset like that and then now we're gonna click apply again so now with that done we're gonna click here go back to edit mode I'm gonna zoom in I'm gonna hold alt I'm on edge select I'm still holding alt I'm gonna click here and I'm gonna push that down slightly I'm gonna press S to scale on the z-axis zero I just pulled that up so I'm gonna hold alt I'm gonna click here I'm gonna press S, press S to scale on the z-axis zero here I'm gonna press A to D select I'm gonna hold alt click here then press S to scale on the z-axis zero there This is basically where our belt would go. I'm going to hold shift in the middle mouse button to uh, pan up. So easy to put on mirror modifiers instead of, you know, even though it's, we could easily grab this. A lot of times I'll just come and look for auto mirror, left click. Auto mirror is on there that quick. I'll press A to D select there. Now I'll hold alt and click here. Now I'll press S to scale on the Z axis zero there. I'm going to press E here, right click. Move down slightly, I press E to extrude, right click, and then move down, something like that. So now you say, okay, we have this now, right? We've got this. This is easily dealt with, and what we're going to do to deal with that is we're going to click here. We're going to go to sculpt mode. Here in sculpt mode, sculpt mode allows you to, if, you're, if you've ever heard of a program called ZBrush Blenders, uh, sculpt mode is very similar to that. It's make certain things very easy to do particularly things like this what we're going to do is click here go to the inflate brush we'll zoom in we'll press f and we press f we can make this which is our brush here in sculpt mode get bigger we press f and push the other way to get smaller we're just going to click right here and uh, we can easily deal with that as you can see hold the middle mouse button and rotate Very nice. Okay, I'm going to hold them in the mouse button to rotate. Click. See how this is? There's a space here. If you want to deal with that easily, I'm going to click here, go to the snake hook brush. I'm going to press F and then pull my mouse to make this a brush size bigger. I can click here and fairly easily adjust that and then if this happens here we'll just click here go to the inflate brush and deal with that pretty cool Okay, what we want to do now is click on the layer where our shirt is at, then click on our shirt. I'm then going to click here and then go to edit mode. One of the uh, things that I like about this method of making clothes compared to the method of taking the geometry from the actual character that the clothes are going onto is the topology is fairly even and is it's clean. It's generally good topology. However, we do need more uh, geometry for what we're trying to do so what we're going to do is we're going to press a to select our shirt we're going to press w then we're going to select subdivide we're then going to press a to deselect i'm now going to click here and then click here to go to object mode i'm going to hold shift and i'm going to while holding shift click on the layer where our character is at so what i'm going to do now is i am going to go to our modifier tab i'm going to click here and then I'm going to go to the uh, shrink wrap modifier to put that on to our shirt. I'm now going to click here and then select our Manuel Bastoni character as the target. I'm then going to put a check mark next to keep above surface. And then I'm going to click here to take this offset to 0.001. I'm going to click here to make it look like this is applied to our character
Okay, now with our shirt clicked on, I'm going to click here, then click here to go to edit mode. I'm going to make sure we're on edge select, which we are. I'm going to hold alt, and I'm going to select this top edge there. I'm then going to press alt O to turn on our connected proportional editing tool. If you look here, you can see this right here. That shows that our connected proportional editing tool is on. The proportional editing tool allows you to move more than one vertice edge or face at a time. The connected proportional editing tool does the same thing. It just has a more localized effect. If, you know. So uh, with that on, we're going to press G. We're going to roll our mouse wheel to shrink the area of influence. We're going to push down like that. Then going to left click to lock that in. Hold them in a mouse button to take a look. I'm going to press A to deselect. I'm then going to click here. I'm going to turn on X ray. And uh, what we're going to do now is we are going to click here, go back to object mode. We're going to click back on our modifier tab we're going to click apply all so with that apply all we're now going to click here and then click here to go to edit mode okay so what we're going to do now is we're going to click on our shirt we're going to click here to go to edit mode we're going to go to our tools look down to where we see auto mirror we're going to left click on auto mirror we're going to press a to deselect we're going to hover here. We're going to hold control while holding control. We're going to press R. I'm going to left click once, left click a second time to lock that in. I'm going to press A to deselect. I'm going to hover here, hold control, press R. I'm going to left click once, then left click again to deselect. And uh, I'm going to click here. I'm going to go to vertex select. I'm going to click here. I'm going to press G, roll the area of influence down for my connected proportional editing tool. I'm going to push out. I'm trying to give us enough room. That's what I'm doing. Uh, uh, for our geometry, which you can see when you turn. So that's what I'm doing. I'm holding the mouse button to rotate. What I'm doing is I'm rotating to look to see if any of our character mesh is coming through. And it doesn't look like it is. So I'm going to press A to deselect. Okay, now what we're going to do is we are going to click here, go to object mode. We're going to click here. We're going to put another shrink wrap modifier on. Let's put a check mark here. Let's take this up to one. Let's click here and let's click on our character mesh. There we go. Let's click here. Okay, there we go. So it did adjust. Okay, so with that done, I'm going to click apply, click here, go to edit mode, I'm going to go to edge select, I'm going to press O twice to turn off the connected proportional editing tool, I'm going to click here, I held alt to select there, then what I'm going to do is press X to bring up our delete menu, and then I'm going to choose dissolve edges, and I did that because it looked like there were some edges that didn't need to be there. I'm going to click here. 
push that towards itself there. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold Alt. Let me go to Edge Select first. Now I'm reholding Alt. I'm going to press S to scale on the Z-axis zero. I'm going to left click to lock that in. Oh, I can see right here there's some edges. Look strange. So what I'm going to do is press A to deselect. Hold Alt. Click here. I'm going to press X. Then uh, this brings up our delete menu. I'm going to choose dissolve edges. I want to click here. I'm going to hold shift, press X, and then select dissolve edges. I'm going to hold alt, click here. I'm going to press X, select dissolve edges here. Hold shift, click here, press X, and then select dissolve edges. Press X, dissolve edges. Click here, press X, and then dissolve edges. I'm just zooming in here to see. Okay, there we go. And this uh, piece of geometry, let's click here. I'll press C. I'm going to press X and then select the faces to get rid of that geometry. Now I'm going to hold Alt. Go to Edge Select first. Hold Alt. Click here. I'm going to hold Shift, then Alt. Click here. I'm going to press S to scale on the Z-axis, 0. I think for this... This is kind of strange here. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold Alt, press C, select all of this right here. I'm going to press X, delete all of that there. I'm going to hold Alt, go to Edge, select, hold Alt, click here, press S to scale on the Z-axis, 0. And then now what I'm going to do is press E to extrude come down like this, press S to scale like that. I'm going to hold control. I don't want that. I don't want this. There we go. So now I'm going to hold control, press R, put loop cuts in here. And now what I'm going to do is click here go to object mode, click here, go to shrink wrap, click here, let me right click, there we go, now, I need to, there we go, I'll select keep above surface, take this up one, and then click apply. this let's all grab and pull this back that push that there we go it's the same thing here click here and now I'll just push that together like that. Taking a look from out here. So now what I'm going to do is hold shift and the mouse button. Click here. I'm going to press E to extrude. Just like that. Now I'm going to press E to extrude. Again like that. Now I'll press A to deselect. I'm going to come to object mode to take a look. Okay. Okay, so I'm going to click on our shirt. I'm going to click here. Then I'm going to turn off X-Ray. There we go. So we're going to click here. We're going to go to Sculpt Mode. 
And uh, like before, we're going to make sure we're clicked on inflate brush, which we are. And we're just going to come here and some of these things that are like this. I'm just going back and forth over this. And I can click here, go to edit mode and like that to help out. Back to scope mode. So I'm going to click here, go to object mode, click here, I'm going to go to edit mode here, I'm going to hold the minimize button to rotate the view, I'll click, push that in, something like that, I'll press A to deselect. Okay, now I'm going to click here, Wait a second before I do that, let me press A to select everything. A to deselect. I'm going to click here, go to object mode. Now I'm going to hold shift and then click here. So now we have our shirt as well as our pants. Okay, so I'm going to go back in the scope mode for the shirt. And I just want to make sure that the uh, Yeah, this looks right as far as the shirt and the pants working together. So now the shirt is overlapping the pants. Okay, so we have the basic shape. Now all we need is some textures on here. And uh, my wife, Susan, is better at texturing than me. So she's going to show you how to put textures onto the shirt as well as these pants. Hi, this is Susan Arango. I was asked to show you how to do some texturing in cycles. And Ali wanted it to be fast, so I'm going to show you how to do it really fast. And it's not going to be perfect, so you can see the potential for it to um, be able to find things that you can do yourself to make it look even better than what I'm going to do here. So we'll continue on with his model and we're going to click on the and make sure that we're clicked on the pants so we know we are because that showed up and then we have to apply the mirror modifier otherwise it messes up the UV mesh later on so we'll click apply then we'll come back over here go back to edit mode and we're going to change it to the edge and holding we'll turn the model and holding alt and shift we're going to click here which gives you the whole edge loop turn it around click it here another edge loop and then between the legs like that control e marks your scene if you hit a you can see that everything is selected so we're going to go back into object mode so now your uv is set up and ready to um, be textured on so now we're going to come over here and we're going to click material new don't do anything else there then we're going to click texture make sure it's set to brush and then we're going to click new you should see this panel here if you see anything other than what's here you need to go back and do it again because it's important to do it in a certain order 
So first material, don't touch anything else. Then texture, make sure it's on brush, then new. And this is what you should see. You're then going to click open. We're going to go to the desktop and find our jean material. Open that. You should see it here. If you wanted to open more um, textures, you would do it from here, just like you do it in Blender Render. And you can rename it up here to keep your textures, um, if you have several of them, in order. You then come over to where it says default, click the arrow, go to compositing. All right, so everything jumps around. You can move this over to give yourself more room. Now we need to set up our node tree because we're in cycles. So I'm just really quickly going to tell you which nodes to choose. First you come here and you click this button, which shows you your materials. Then we're going to add a texture coordinate node. You go to input, texture coordinate, bring that up, click it. Then we're going to add an image texture. So you come up to texture, down to image texture, come up, click it. And then we're going to add a shader. Go to shader, down to mix shader, come up here, click it. All right, so now that we have all our nodes, that's all you're going to need. You're going to take the UV out of your texture coordinate and apply it to the vector in your image texture. Once you do that, you're going to take your color out of your image texture and insert it into the color of the diffuse node. Then you're going to take your alpha node, put it into the back of your sh mix shader, and we're going to move this over here a little bit. Then we're going to take this, put it into from the diffuse node into the mix shader node in the top shader slot, and then we're going to bring this out from the mix shader into the material output surface. So once that's done, your node tree is all set up. You can then hide that, give yourself some more room down here. So now we're going to take our model and set her up so that we can see her legs because we're going to be working on the jean. We're going to hit T to bring up this menu. And then we're going to go into edit mode and click U to unwrap. And you should see your jeans pop up. Okay, so the reason this popped up and it looks a little strange, two things. One, the x-ray is on, so down here you click that and that'll take the x-ray away. So now you can't see through it. And the other thing is everything is selected. So we're going to hit A to deselect and hover over the pants and hit L. And that will select just the pants. Something else was selected by hitting A. So um, that'll be fine the way it is there. All right, so now we can go to texture paint. And right away you see it says missing data. This turns white. Add a paint slot. So you're going to click add a paint slot, diffuse color. Um, you can name this whatever you want. And we're going to change this to 2048 by 2048 because Ollie says that's important. So, And I'm going to change this to a blue color because we're doing blue jeans and it's just easier if uh, it's more or less the color of what we're doing. Then you're going to come down a little bit to where it says texture and when you click that you should see the te texture that you chose in here and right below it where it says brush mapping we're going to change that to stencil and you won't see anything else change but when you come here you'll now see your stencil pop up in this window. So now the only thing left to do is paint your stencil onto your model. And I'll tell you right now, um, it's a very long and tedious process to get it right and to get it to look good. And there's a lot of different ways and I'm still trying to figure out the best way to do it. Um, so this is just going to show you really quickly how to get this jean texture onto that model in a decent looking fashion. Um, I find that having it at 100% or 1 over here for strength um, works the best in the beginning to just for learning. However, um, you can adjust that up and down as needed 
and if you don't know you hit F to adjust your brush size you hit F and then scale your mouse and that adjusts your brush size up and down when you're dealing with the texture its controls are a little bit different it's totally right click so you right click and hold to move it around you hold shift and right click to size and you hold control and right click to rotate. And that becomes very important later on, as you'll see, to get just the right part of the picture um, on the right part of the model. Um, once you start to mess around with the size, holding shift and making it bigger and smaller, um, if you wanna quickly go back, you can hit reset transform, which will take it back. You can also hit image aspect, which will make it the exact size that it was um, when you brought it in from your computer. So for right now, we're going to scale this up and position it over the waist like that. And that's the shirt coming down. So we're gonna put it up a little bit so that uh, you just see the button. Now, the other important thing to remember when you're doing this is you don't want to click once and paint this isn't painting it's stenciling so you want to click once and move click once and move click once and move and just go along where your model is across the picture and as you can see it changes as you go along um, you just keep going back and forth um, just do it wherever you want the picture to be on your model. And like I said, it's not an exact science the first time. It's not going to be perfect the first time. You're, you're really going to have to play with it. So once you get a good portion of it on, we're then going to take it away and look at what we did. So in order to take it away, right click and move it. And now, as you can see, this picture is now on your model. Um, it looks pretty good. If you scroll in, you can see it. So it looks pretty good. And we'll go back a little. However, when you turn it to the side, as you can see here, it starts to try to wrap around the side so then it gets pulled. And that's where the very fine tuning finessing comes in. And it, it can be very tedious and very long. Um, I found the best way to do this on the side is to get G material that matches, um, have that on the model initially. And then there's pictures of scenes you can get on the internet and you just follow the scene down the side of the leg and you just keep doing that until you get it the way you want it. But for right now, we're just gonna continue with this. And here we're gonna just move it around a little bit. Try and get as much of it looking decent as we can, just so you have an idea of what it looks like. And this works well with clothes, it works well with fur, um, it works well with just about anything that you can find a picture of and then bring it in here and apply it. It's just very tedious to just keep going back and forth and back and forth until you get it the way you want it. So let's see how that looks. Okay, it's a little messed up right here. But I think you get the general idea of um, how quickly you can put it on and make it look like she has a pair of jeans on. Um, we'll put the back on real quick. And 
and sometimes it does that. I don't know why. Um, when you hold shift and the right click, it'll scale it in either the X or the Y or the Z or whatever. And I, I really don't know why it does that. I haven't figured that out yet. There's no rhyme or reason to it. So like I said, you just come back here and hit reset transform and it just takes it back to its original um, dimensions. So obviously here those pockets don't match the size of her butt. So we're just gonna come across here real quick. The computer's lagging. Which is saying something because this is an alienware. So now we're going to resize this back down and then we'll put the patches on separately. great, but I think you get the idea. Now sometimes it's like, do you want it fast or do you want it good? You know, you can't really do this stuff fast. You can't, you can't rush it. So you just keep manipulating the stencil and this will work on cars, helmets, tanks, trucks, you know, if you want to put uh, bumper stickers on something or graffiti on a wall, any, any, anything like that, um, this technique will work on. It's just you, very time consuming, very tedious, and you just need to take your time, and position the stuff properly. And like I said, this is not going to be perfect. It's just going to be quick. Okay, so once you get pretty much everything covered like that, um, you can then come up here to your brushes and switch to clone brush, which will take away the stencil. And then, again, very tedious. You can hold control, choose a spot on your model um, that you want to clone. here hold control and click and then that will put whatever is in this spot here where you're clicking which is particularly useful for um, detail like that 
and that um, if he wanted that in a specific place, if he wanted decals in a certain place or, or whatever. So we can just follow it around. just to get detail where, where you want it. I'm just trying to cover up the spots that are not covered by anything yet. Okay, so before we leave the um, pants portion that you need to come over here, click new image and um, create a background for your UV here, which I already did um, when I paused the video. So make sure that you do that. And then once you do that, um, you'll see an asterisk there, which is reminding you to save the images because if you don't save the image texture of the jeans separate, here where it says save as image and just save the blender file your texture will disappear you have to save the textures down here under save as image and then save the blender file itself separately so in order to do that you need to put the background behind the UV which it'll say new image so you just create that you can make it whatever color you want then you'll see asterisks to remind you to save the image um, pictures the texture pictures so click save as image and then I'm just going to save it to the desktop I'll leave it as untitled and click save as image so now my gene texture is saved so it should appear when I bring the model back the other thing I wanted to mention that's also an option for the fine detail and getting your textures to look just right is over here on the UV side down here where it says view if you click paint, your stencil will work the same over here as it does over here um, so that you can apply textures to your UV. Perhaps the lines will help you to place the textures in the appropriate places, whatever. It's just another option to be able to fine tune the textures that you're putting on your model. So remember, when you're, after you unwrap, you want to go to material, don't touch anything, texture, make sure it's on brush, new, and then open your texture from there. Create your node tree, texture your model in texture paint. Make sure on the UV side that you create a new image behind your UV, whatever color you want, and then make sure you save all your texture pictures before you move on. So now we're going to move on to the shirt. So we're going to come down here to object mode and this time we're going to choose the shirt. We'll go to edit mode to make sure that we have the shirt selected and we do. Again, it's in that x-ray thing so we're going to click that to get rid of the x-ray thing. And we're also going to apply our mirror modifier if you have that on. Oops, I forgot you have to be in object mode to do that. If you don't have a mirror modifier on your model, you don't have to worry about that. Then we're going to mark our seams just like we did last time. So shift alt for your edge loops. And once you have those, control E, mark your seams. And then A to select, deselect, and we're going to just hover and hit L so that we open up appropriately on the other side and we don't get that funny thing showing there. Then we're going to hit U, unwrap, and we see our uh, shirts. And as you can see, our jean texture is still popping up, which we'll get rid of that in a moment. So once we do that, we need to come over here to material and now as you see we have a brand new slate here because we're now on a different object. This is the shirt. So we're not just applying a new texture, we have to apply the whole thing again. So again, don't hit anything. Come to texture, make sure it's on brush. See this is on brush mask for whatever reason. I don't know why. Blender does its own thing sometimes. 
and we're just going to change it to brush texture and now we see our jeans so we're going to bring in a new one you can either X this out and get rid of it and bring in a new one completely um, or you can uh, just hit open if you come over here where these two arrows are this is where all your textures will live so your um, jean texture that we were using before is in here and also your material that your jeans are painted on lives here as well so for but for right now we're just going to hit open and we're going to go to desktop oh, i'm sorry desktop and we're going to choose the shirt and we're going to open the image so now we see our shirt um, we should have so if we go to texture paint, okay, so there's our shirt. So we don't need to reset up the node tree because it's still working. So now we can adjust the model. We have our shirt. We need to add our paint slot. And all this is is a canvas to paint our texture on. That, that's all it is. Um, so we're going to make this white. So it's different um, because if you if you don't have anything there then blender doesn't know what to uh, paint on so we're going to start right here with the neck and we're just going to texture this on again really quickly just so you get an idea of what it's going to look like So if we take it away, there's your shirt. Okay. And like I said, it's definitely not perfect. So you can come up here. You can fill this in on the sides. You can use clone brush to fill that in on the sides. You can angle this um, and try and make that match up a little bit better on the side. spin her around to the back. We can do the same thing to the back. And, and I wouldn't do this normally. I would just um, find a shirt that had the front and the back that I could switch between to get it to texture properly. But like I said, I just want you to be able to see how easy it is to get the things on there. You just have to have the proper nude tree set up. lot of time. <laughs> All right, so if we wanted the, to do the sleeves, just line them up like that. And just texture down the sleeve. is much better at manipulating the mesh and knowing his way around Blender than I am. I, I learned what I know about the basics from him and then I just pick stuff up off the internet because I don't really like modeling too much. I like um, doing the textures and that kind of stuff. I, I, don't, I don't like the modeling and the sculpting and all that. So I'm not as good with manipulating that kind of stuff as he is. And if something goes wrong, I just say, Ali, come and fix it. And usually he does. Because you know, as you all know, Blender can be very temperamental sometimes. So anyway, um, that's pretty much it. And remember, you have to save your textures. 
So after you get them all on here the way that you want them, we're going to go over to the left where the UV is, and we're going to hit Save Images. Like I said, it's not perfect, but you can see. So we'll go over here to our image and save as image. And we'll make this to untitled and save that. Okay, so hopefully that's enough to get you going with texture painting in cycles on your models. Um, Ali's going to finish up with how to get it to show in a render. Um, it's pr not too much different from the way you texture paint this same way in Blender Render. It's just a little different setting it up over on the left hand side. Just remember to save your pictures, your textures um, on the left or underneath your UV as well as saving your Blender file. and. I have some videos on my YouTube channel, um, Susan Arango, that uh, are a little bit older for texture painting, but I'm going to add some new ones pretty soon as we continue to perfect this technique. Again, it's not perfect, it's just quick. So thank you, and Ali will finish and show you the finished product. Okay, I am back. The screen is going to look a little different from when my wife had it here. I was changing things around a little bit. Uh, the important thing is, is that you have these images saved. Uh, what we're going to do now is we're going to make it so that this shows up in a render. So when you do the texture painting, don't think that just because you had the texture paint on here that when you go to render, everything is going to render out. I'm going to show you how to do that now. It's very simple. Okay, so what we're going to do is you were in texture paint. We're now in object mode. You're going to click on your shirt. We're going to click on this material node here. We're going to click new. I'm going to zoom back some. We have our material output, our diffuse, BSDF. We're going to click add texture. We're going to go to image texture. We're going to connect from color to color here. We're going to click open and we're going to look for the uh, texture work that uh, my wife Susan did. So we're going to click here and then we're going to click open. And now what we're going to do is that took us back into texture paint mode. We're going to click here, go to object mode. We're going to click on these pants. We don't need this uh, node set up here. So what we're going to do is we're going to take away that material. We're going to click new to replace it. And then we're going to do very similar like our shirt. We're going to click add. So add texture, image texture. We're going to go from color to color. Then we're going to click open. We're going to look for Susan's texture work, which is right here. Then we're going to click open image. Okay, now with that done, what we're going to do is we're going to click here and we're going to go back to our default view. This is the view that you typically see when you come into Blender. I'm going to press zero on the number keypad. You could also go to display and then select view camera to get to this view as well. And uh, with that done, I'm going to click here. See where it says image editor here? I'm going to click here and select new window. The reason why I'm doing this is if you don't push this here, when you go to render, this window is taken up and sometimes when you go to close it, I don't know, I've, there's been times where I have closed Blender by accident, so I just prefer to set this for new window, so that when I render, there's a separate you know window. So uh, with that done, let's take this all the way up to 100%. Let's look at our sampling. We're at our render is 128. Uh, I'm going to click here. We have denoising on. So let's see uh, how uh, this looks. So I'm going to click render and then I'm going to select render image. And Blender is rendering.
That's good. Uh, C does good work. <laughs> That's very good. I am very pleased with how it, it came out. Uh, I think that is excellent. Hopefully you think that is excellent as well. Uh, it's good stuff. So uh, now, hopefully this will let you be able to do more things with the uh, Manuel Bastoni add-on uh, now that you can actually have some clothes on your character and hopefully you'll be able to take from this and add to this. Uh, okay guys, that's it for the tutorial. For all of those of you out there who like the videos on this channel, we share them. Thank you very much. I really appreciate that. And to those of you who are new to this channel, if you like the videos on this channel and you would like to see more, please subscribe and thank you for viewing.